Hey guys, good Wednesday morning. It's just a little before 9 a.m. Eastern time in today's weather yield outlook. We're going to talk about the August forecast outlook and how there's a risk for some cooler and wetter weather to prevail. The tropics are going to get active and we've still got several thunderstorm cluster chances, including some that are going on right now on radar that I want to talk about and get right into. So active uh, or action packed uh, video today, if you will. This is a look at our Clarity Radar product this morning. And again, you can see we do have some thunderstorm clusters ongoing. Again, just before 9 a.m. Eastern, uh, Wednesday, July 31st, we've got thunderstorm clusters ongoing here. And we're going to continue to see that uh, throughout the course of the day today, maybe a couple of rounds. You know, we look, we talk about the, the summer uh, forecast in general. We had a really active um, severe weather forecast season in for the summer. We look here at just our, our outlooks for the day. We're going to continue to see an enhanced risk for a, a severe weather outlook here across portions of western Iowa today. Tomorrow that threat shifts east, eastern Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and then as we go further on it shifts east onto the east coast here uh, by day three. So uh, we've got a very, very busy pattern here this week, and it's also going to be a, a associated with some heat. Um, it's been cool and wet so far, though, this, uh, this July. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm Michael Clark here with BAM Weather. Make sure you subscribe, share this video with a friend if you don't already do so for us. Severe weather still running wild. We'll recap that. I'm going to look at the summer pattern to date, where we're going from here, our harvest outlook, and we'll talk about some of our latest yield thought processes as well. You know, if you if you followed us back um, in our summer forecast, uh, we talked about overall severe weather signals indicating, um, you know, enhanced enhanced risks uh, for severe weather and duration risks. Here we talked about that uh, quite heavily. You look at just the last three days severe weather reports. This is from July 28th, uh, 98 severe weather reports, a couple of significant wind and hail reports, South Dakota and uh, uh, Kansas on the 28th. You go to the 29th, a long track thunderstorm cluster brought um, significant wind reports across South Dakota all the way through Iowa into Illinois, Indiana, and Kentucky. And then you go forward here, you continue. This was yesterday's severe weather reports, a long track uh, MCS brought damaging winds throughout uh, the same regions yet again, another 307 severe weather reports yesterday. And these areas continue to get inundated with just severe weather. For the month of June, in total, uh, just, just glancing off of this, there's, there's over 4,000 severe weather reports in the month of June. There's tornadoes all over the place in the central grain belt and hail, too. Uh, July so far, uh, you're, you're almost just as much. You're sitting at almost about 3,000 severe weather reports, but far more tornado reports and wind reports. Uh, 212 tornadoes in July, 166 tornadoes in June. All right. Uh, the severe hail of uh, reports, so out of the two months total, uh, when you look at, at hail that's basically over two inches, 63 of those in July, 150 of those in June. So 213 reports of hail being greater than two inches, and a lot of those came out of the central uh, plains where there's a lot of grain that's grown, okay? So we want to think about this. Yes, it's been cool. Yes, it's been wet. We know all that. That's great. It's helping a lot of people. I mean, I've got a major cornfield here uh, in, in, out my backyard. This is I'm sitting here recording off my back porch, and uh, this that's that's corn out there, and uh, it's big. It's it's really big. I think most of the ears have two, or most of the stalks have two ears on them. It's the best looking corn I've seen around here. We haven't been hit with an 80 mile per hour wind gust or two inch hail though. That's something to keep in mind. A lot of folks have. All right, July overall, though, the grain belt has been below normal temperatures, no question about it. When you look at the just looking back in July here, um, it's it's ranking around the top third coolest, all right? Um, and and essentially, the, the higher the number here out of 132, the coolest ranking it gets out of the last 132 years. Uh, so places like central Illinois, you're running in the, the, the top 20% coolest Julys, to date, okay, uh, top 30% for most of Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana. A lot of crop grown there. It's been cool. The precipitation has been overall decent um, 
for the majority of us, southern South Dakota, northern Nebraska, we've missed out on rainfall chances, and central uh, central Kansas has missed out here and there as well. Um, July, generally not not too bad. Ohio, though, West Virginia, Pennsylvania areas, you do need the rain, and you are going to get it. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But just looking at precipitation ranks in central Illinois, it's the wettest uh, July in history. All right, that's that's pretty crazy, okay? Uh, northeast Missouri, it's the fourth wettest. Eastern Iowa, northern Illinois, sixth to seventh wettest stretch there. Northern Indiana, seventh wettest stretch for July. Um, so uh, it's been really wet, but look at eastern Ohio, top third driest stretch here in July. Summer to date, uh, you can see where the, the, uh, the activity was really the highest. Now, we cannot forget that this area here, for an extended period of time was basically underwater. You have to imagine that's going to do something to the yields. Not sure. Can't be perfect, though, that's for sure. Southern Illinois, western Tennessee, uh, east, southeastern the Boot Hill, Missouri. These are all running some of the wettest summers to date uh, on record in the last 132 years. And over here in eastern Ohio, West Virginia area, it's running one of the driest. But that's about to change. Again, it's about to change. I think we're going to we're going to talk about that here momentarily. Temperatures, though, they just haven't been hot. Since dating back to June 1st, uh, the warmest spot in the grain belt has been eastern Ohio um, by far. The northeast has ran really, really warm this year. Okay. I want to talk to you about a major pattern driver that no one's really talking about, but the southern hemispheric, uh, the southern hemisphere stratospheric polar vortex is, is experiencing uh, very rare and, and, and crazy disruptions that's altering what we call our AAO or our uh, Antarct Antarctic Oscillation uh, Index. Okay, and um, Antarctic, uh, Antarctic, uh, I forget what the other A means. I have to look, <laughs> I can't remember what it means. Um, but that is uh, looking at unprecedented low levels. Um, and it's interesting, whenever we have a very, very strong negative AAO, like you're seeing here from both American and European models forecast, it influences our weather patterns here rather dramatically, more than we think, okay? And we look at those correlations, the negative AAO correlations for temperatures and precipitation. Uh, I want you to look at the general uh, pattern here, the divide between warm and cool on the negative AAO temperature correlation for August and the overall generalized area of above normal precipitation focus from that negative AAO. And then I want you to go down here and look at the weather models. Uh, the difference is the PNA region. We have a little bit more of a positive PNA right now than, than what we have in those correlations. But regardless, the general idea here is a very, very matched up pattern. A cooler risk, this is the, the week two EPS forecast, by the way. This is the week two outlook right here from the European. And this is the week two outlook from the European on rainfall. And, uh, and again, you can kind of see generally a wet look across the central U.S., drier to the south, all right, warmer to the south here, warmer to the south on the outlook, all right. Generally, these are matching patterns for the most part. And with the AAO being so substantially negative right now, we believe it matters going forward. Check it out if you were to roll it forward into September. If this type of behavior continues, it's a significant correlation for colder temperatures in September and a significant correlation for drier conditions in September with the exception of the Deep South, perhaps. We'll have to see if we can continue to roll that forward because some of our neutral ENSO years for September are very, very warm. Most recently, 2019, which was record warm September. So if we'll have to see how this goes, but there's the cooler risk to the envelope there for September, if you will. Rainfall the next two days, we're going to continue the severe weather threat in the ring of fire pattern. It wouldn't shock me to see another long track uh, MCS come through, okay? Uh, this is where the rainfall is going to be focused. Northwest flow, thunderstorm clusters coming in, heavy rain, flash flooding, hail and damaging winds, and again, isolated tornadoes cannot be ruled out. Next two days, this is where you're looking at heavy rain risks. Southern Minnesota, East Iowa, Central Illinois, Central Indiana, Eastern Kentucky. It looks to be at least in the bullseye for now. The next seven days, uh, you can see here where the precipitation focus is. Remember I said Ohio, West Virginia, you're going to get rain. And, and, I, and I believe that's coming. The next seven-day precipitation focus, largely going to be here. Northwest flow aloft. Uh, next Monday into Tuesday, I would really, really keep an eye out. Next Monday into Tuesday, early next week. 
um, for the potential of another big thunderstorm cluster. The, the heat dome expands, very, very hot conditions, a lot of energy, explosive energy, and energy riding around the periphery of that ridge early next week. I wouldn't be shocked early next week if somewhere in here we are talking about a significant threat for severe weather once again. So something to keep in mind there. The week two forecast looks like this from the American Ensemble data, uh, the favored outcome right now. Again, generally, uh, this, this area here generally favored right now to, to run wet, and that is because of that, ant, that AAO. Listen, in the summer forecast package, our thought process was August would present a drier risk. If this wasn't going on, I really believe that there would be a drier, hotter risk to the month of August. Um, but the, the, the pattern is being interrupted by what's going on with the southern hemisphere uh, polar vortex and its unprecedented disruptions and what's going on. It's, I mean, it's, you saw the charts. It's off the scales. And so we're seeing impacts to the forecast uh, that we didn't anticipate. And it just is the way that it goes sometimes when you're trying to outlook weather that far. The 16 to 30 day rainfall outlook, for the most part right now, data is not indicating any lack of rainfall. Nothing excessive, but perhaps normal rain in the 16 to 30. The latest August official forecast since today's the last day of July is going to paint an above normal rainfall picture across the grain belt, uh, above normal uh, across the East Coast. All right. One way to, to bomb this or blow this is get a tropical storm in the Gulf and move it up in here. If you want to, if you want to bust that forecast, that's what you would do. It's not off the question or not off the table. Something to think about. Temperatures this week, guys, it's hot, no question, mid-90s. Anytime you're above normal in late uh, July, early August, you're going to be warm. So this week it's warm. Cold front comes through like we talked about a couple of uh, weeks ago or days ago, I'm sorry, on uh, the last weather yield episode here. Uh, but it's going to get cooler. Gosh, you tough to, tough to um, you know, uh, complain about cooler than normal temperatures in August, especially for the crop. Temps in the 16 to 30 day, well, again, I don't believe the European weekly over here that you see is really seeing the negative AAO uh, risk for cooler all too well. You can kind of see where there's a cool risk in here. The, the dome of the warmest temperatures would be here. The CFS weekly for week three and week four seems to be sniffing out cooler departures a little bit better than the European weekly. I honestly think the European weekly overall sucks. I don't think it's a great model. I think it's overutilized and over 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 uh, relied on personally. So August temperatures right now, this is the final August temperature forecast just adjusted this morning. Um, I still think it's hot, especially across the West and the East Coast. Um, but I think a, a, a large part of the grain belt could be at to below normal temperatures right now for the month of August. Real quick, what about the tropics? Well, we do have the potential of a tropical storm or hurricane developing. Right now, all indications are because of the trough that's going to swing through up here in the, in the states that it'll pick this up and carry it off the east coast. And overall, right now, avoid any landfall stuff. So we're not seeing the, the, the risk right now for landfall. We are seeing out in the extended period a couple more areas to focus on for development as that region continues to remain favorable for development. There's a lot of rising air over Africa and the main development regions there of the eastern Atlantic Ocean. So that can continue to be a risk here as we go deeper into August. What does it all say for yield? Well, right now the data, the weather, the weather data favors plus 1.6 yield from trend. So that's 182.6 right now uh, on the corn yield. And uh, that's from a weather standpoint, okay, a 182.6. Uh, and I'll tell you this, it's really difficult to factor in, sorry, I got something in my eye. It's really difficult to factor in what the, the weather, the severe weather has done to the crop. Has it damaged enough crop to, to, to bring that number down? It's difficult to know. There's been a lot of it. There has been a lot of severe weather, way more than normal, way, way more than normal. Does it matter? Probably. Is there a way to know? I don't know until we start seeing tours and people evaluating. It's really difficult to tell. I see this stuff every year. I see the for yield forecasts. I see the projections, and it always ends up being a little bit different than what everyone thought. You know, uh, the severe weather has to matter. It has to be factored in. How much is it going to matter? I don't know. Generally speaking, the weather says this is a really big crop for the most part right now. 
um, and it will continue to be one. Generally speaking, plus 0.2 uh, on soybean trends. The August forecast right now for beans is making that look really, really good. Okay. If we had to look at harvest right now, all right, right now we're favoring a much above normal temperature pattern. I'll show you this one real quick. These are the analogs where years failed. It's kind of cool, Enzo neutral, not really into La Nina yet. 05, 08, 13, 16, and 17. They're very, very warm harvest outlook. That's our current harvest forecast right now, much above normal temperatures for September, October, November. Precipitation, uh, for the most part, guys, it really, fa it really factors in it being really dry across the Deep South. Um, the idea here is, is that uh, this can bust easily with a tropical storm. Okay, so that's not off the table. Um, it can remain wet in the northern tier and the central plains for harvest and get drier in the southern and eastern portions of the belt there, um, quite possibly. And that's what you kind of see in our official outlook right now. We're a little bit wetter here, which I talked about that tropical risk. It's really difficult to say we're going to be dry there, being how active the tropics can be. Um, drier to the east, drier to the southwest, wet to the northern plains, equal chances elsewhere for harvest right now. So uh, if you're wondering, if anyone's curious for winter, all right, I'll give you a quick little teaser. Right now, the idea would be to favor uh, the northwestern tier of the country to be below normal temperatures, to be cold, uh, possibly, all right, and warmer down here to the south. Uh, overall, rather drier than normal as well here with an active polar jet to the north. Um, this would favor potentially bigger winter storms in the Midwest and possibly into the north and east. We'll monitor. This is just for fun. It's for entertainment. Don't take it too seriously. Share it with a friend. Thanks for checking it out. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.